Are my personal assets protected by having a company? Is what we're talking about today in the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor, I'm joined by a resident expert, accountant Robert King from Experian. Good to be back once again, John. Thank you very much. Now, in this episode, we want to talk about this. It's an interesting one because the small business operator, sole traders, think if we go to a company, maybe that's going to absolve us of all responsibilities. Mm. That's not quite true, I imagine. No, no. It, it used to be that some time ago, um, but things change over time, um, mm. and particularly in, in there's certain areas that you now can be liable for, uh, I suppose, taxes within your business or other things as well. So you've got to be very mindful of the, the things that, as a director of a company, you need to keep on track and know your obligations, basically. Yeah, for sure. And of course, if we watch American sitcoms or whatever, we or we watch the American news where companies are going bust left, right, and centre. Mm. They mm. have a, an environment that offers them a lot more protection and freedom, I think, around companies than we do. Where there's lots of obligations here, you can't just. Yeah. You, you heard you hear the word uh, or term "phoenix" companies thrown around a lot, where people would used to. Um, oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, they they would have a company that operate. They then accumulate a whole lot of debt, throw it away, start a new company. Yeah, um, usually just prior to June 30. Oh, ASIC are right onto it now and they, they do frown on it. There is a term quite often used called trading while insolvent. Mm. And what that term means is that if your company <clears throat> excuse me, cannot pay its debts as and when they fall due, mm. then as a director, you actually have an obligation to stop trading. Mm. So, and if you don't stop trading, any debts you incur after that point, you will be personally liable for. Okay. So it's right. really important that you know your business, know your numbers, and if you're struggling financially, there's that line in the sand to say, have we got all these debts that we should be paying but we just can't afford to? That's the point where you can be liable after that personally. Mm. Yeah, I know that there's a friend of mine helped out, you know, his daughter in the in the family business type thing and the, and the, and the son-in-law and they said like, they looked at the numbers and going, oh, this is really bad. But look, let's do this, this. And in hindsight, he turned and said, you know what, I think John, actually technically, I think they were insolvent. You know? mm. Mm. And look, there's been plenty of examples. It, mm. It's really hard to know where that line is mm. um, because if you can go and get a loan from a family member mm. and pay off those debts, mm. then technically you're not insolvent because those debts now aren't due you've, because you've got a loan to satisfy it. So you've, you've got to be really careful. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think that was actually the answer in that case is that there was a cash injection that... Yep. So I guess it's that point of technical insolvency, but if you don't take immediate... Absolutely. And again, that's why you've got to know your short numbers. Short-term money yeah. or get an injection of cash from somewhere to collect, bail out of that. But anyway, but you're saying if you do continue to trade, knowing that you're insolvent... Mm. So anything insolvent, after... That's bad. Yeah, anything after that point, you could be personally liable for. Mm. So if you um, go out and buy $10,000 worth of equipment um, and can't pay for it, you will be personally liable for that debt, even mm. though the company has purchased it. So, mm. yeah. Okay, so what else is there? I see negligence of the director or something. I've yeah, the whiteboard look, over there. What's that's going a, on there? That's a big topic at the moment. Um, occupational health and safety. Uh, there, we've seen lots of examples of people being injured on the work site mm. um, or even killed on the work site. Mm -hmm. And there's now a lot of emphasis placed on the directors to have systems procedures in place to ensure that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So quite a, it affects a lot of, uh, I suppose, building industries and those sorts of industries. Mm. Um, but as a director, if you haven't put steps in place to ensure the safety of your staff, mm -hmm. you could then be held personally liable for negligence if something goes wrong. Okay. So it's important to have systems procedures in place and get an expert in there if you're not sure if you're complying. Mm. Um, not only are there massive fines if something goes wrong, you've seen examples of people going to jail for things that go wrong. Oh, well, that's the thing. I don't mean, I think jail time for you know, negligent directors causing, you know, them being a party to some sort of injury or death type thing. Mm. Jail time, but you're saying now there's a financial implication, a heavy financial implication well, that might affect your own personal assets. Absolutely. So again, and having a company doesn't protect it. Well, no, absolutely not. If you're seen as being negligent in your duties as a director, mm. then you'll be held personally liable for those things. Mm, there you go. So it's no, you're not hiding yourself away or protecting yourself in that regard. Exactly. Okay. What else you got in there? Oh, geez, I'm trying to think. What have we got? Super and pay as you go withholdings. Another good example. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the rules 
don't always apply to the ATO like they do for everyone else. And um, <laughs> yeah. as, as a director, if you aren't paying your staff super, Mm. And if you're not paying their, their pay as you go withholding tax, so the tax on their salary, mm. that's something you can be personally liable for as well. So mm. um, important as a business owner, you make sure you pay your staff super on time. Mm. Unfortunately, it's one of those things that people leave to the last. They think, well, I don't need to pay my staff super. Mm. But if they don't, they can be personally liable oh, I've got liable plenty of it. examples of uh, you know, friends I've known that work for companies that have gone to the wall and they've mm. never seen their entitlement. You know, Unfortunately, that's... The truth that even though there is this way for on the ATO can go people mm. personally for those entitlements, yeah. What you'll probably find in that situation is um, the company's been shut down and then the director has gone bankrupt, uh, which oh. is why you then can't pay the debts. So, no, too can't direct, yeah, okay, exactly. All so. right, okay. Now, you mentioned also off camera about the fact that if directors come in late in the piece, mm. you know, as some sort of saving grace, is that they automatically become a party to the drama it's horrible in um, its entirety yeah if if you if you come into a company mm. that is struggling financially and you think under all good intentions i'm going to come in and i'm going to help turn this company around mm. if it's got that superannuation and that pay as you go withholding liability you become liable personally liable for that when you walk through the door and sign on as a director, even though you weren't a director when it was actually incurred. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know how or why. It's one of those... But they, they were just, oh. Would they gather up and want that money from anybody they can get it from, yeah, type thing. So as a director, you're a party to that, yeah? yeah? absolutely. It, it's, so, it's terrible. But there's and obviously some due diligence and be aware of your obligations around that, yeah? Mm, it's one of the reasons why um, if... If one of our clients is trying going to buy another business, mm. we say don't buy their company because if that company has got those liabilities attached to them, you're taking on those liabilities straight away. So yeah. you know, start a new company afresh. Oh, so you okay. Know. And you can't sort of say, I don't know. I didn't know about that. I don't. No. I shouldn't have to pay the ATO. They don't accept that as an answer. No. And there's no such thing as a what they call a silent director. So some people say, oh, yeah, I'm a director, but I'm a silent director, mm. which means I don't do anything. If you're a director... You're on the books. You you need to know mm. the numbers of the business. Yeah, yeah. Actually, pin in that one too. I'd like to talk to you at some point about the difference between a director shareholder, but we're running out of time on this occasion. So yep. well, now anyway, look, there's obviously in this sort of situation, if you you know want to know where you stand in terms of liabilities and that sort of thing, because your your company, your business is a bit edgewise, and obviously mm. a great accountant's a mm. the first place to start. Yeah. Well, I think the first place to start is having a good accounting software package oh, that yes, will okay. enable you to look at your numbers on a regular basis. Mm. Um, quite often people get way too far behind on their numbers. You know I'm a big advocate of zero to keep track of, of things and mm. that is a good way to be able to quickly look at your numbers and see how accurate they are so you can determine whether you have that personal liability or not. Yeah, okay. And know where you're a bit edgewise in terms of technical insolvency is going to be there in the numbers as well. Yeah. Exactly. And if you're not sure... Give us a call because okay. we'll, we've, we've got experts that can sit down and talk you through the process. Okay. How do they get in contact with Experian, Robert? Uh, Let's go for it. Yep. Uh, website's the best way, experian.com.au. Again, hopefully you can put a little sign down the bottom there to, to uh, put the address on there. Oh, we on have the accomplished that. You've, yeah, you've we'll, done that? We'll Excellent. We'll that out. I think it's there ready to run. So jump on our website. Uh, you'll find all our details to contact us directly and we can have that conversation. Okay, fabulous education there from Robert King, our resident expert accountant, the E Central Business Show. We'll speak to you next time.